has Arizona's basketball dream season already turned into a nightmare? Three straight losses dropped the Cats out of the top 25 rankings. Should Sean Miller be benched to clear his head from hmm, perhaps the FBI investigation? Plus, it's okay to be angry after losing to rival ASU, but Rich Rod's post-game media interview was flat out childish and embarrassing. Hey, TUSD, you banned ethnic studies for using a so-called racially biased textbook, but secretly allow a controversial economics class to be taught using a textbook critics say brainwashes students. These stories and more next on the 520. Welcome to the 520. I'm Steve Nunez. I'm Marty Mata the Fourth. Thanks for joining us. All right, you ready to get this started? Of course. Let's, let's get do this it. started. <laughs> I'm not sure what stung more: losing to ASU in football or witnessing Arizona's basketball team lose three straight in the month of November while watching ASU's hoops team leapfrog the Cats into the rankings at number 20. Who would have thunk it? Paradise to the Bahamas turned out to be one big nightmare for the Cats. They were out of sync, they couldn't hit threes, they couldn't guard off the dribble. Sean Miller got out coached. The Cats, favored to win the battle for Atlantis, came in dead last, losing to NC State, SMU, and Purdue. Cats became the first team in 31 years to drop out of the top 25 poll after being ranked number two in the previous week. Ironically, Louisville, another college basketball team that's under the FBI's watch list, was the last team to do it in 1986. No doubt, the speculation is growing. Could the FBI investigation have a grip on Miller and his top recruited players? We asked fans if Miller should sit out a few games to clear his head. I just think that they're off to a rough start, and it's only the beginning of the season. They're only, what, six games in? So they're going to get better as soon as possible. I don't think he should step aside. I think he's doing a great job. And I'd rather have the losses at the beginning of the season than at the end when it really counts. Well, we've heard from fans. Why do you think Sean Miller is, should sit out a couple of games to kind of clear his head? Uh, here's the thing is it, it looks like he's unfocused. A lot of the calls he's making is a little just distracted, in my opinion. But at the very least, if he's not going to sit out a couple of games, he should at least st uh, call for a press conference and just sort of reassure the entire community, the entire city that he's focused on the team. He's not worried about extracurricular activities. He's going to do what it takes to sort of catch back up after these few losses. And you know what's interesting in talking to Wildcat fans? Again, it's one of those things that led up to this FBI investigation. Everyone has seen things happen around the community, but everyone kind of turns a blind eye. And talking to some of the fans, same type of reaction. Everyone is like, oh, yeah, the FBI investigation. <laughs> but we're diehard Wildcat fans, therefore we have to forgive and kind of try to forget. And that's just the wrong attitude, period. And, and, and honestly, he might not even be directly distracted by the FBI investigation, but at the very least, he doesn't have his head where it needs to be. So he, he seems a little bit out of touch exactly. with reality a little bit. And, and that's it's a direct reflection of his coaching staff as a whole. I mean, it's, it's sort of their job to kind of keep him in check and to sort of pick up the slack of where he, where he left off, and that doesn't seem to be happening anywhere. There has to be something going on behind the scenes more than just uh, Arizona losing three games because losing to NC State, SMU, and then Purdue. Purdue was ranked going into this <laughs> tournament at number 17. but At the bottom. <laughs> yeah, and losing to three teams like that, the cast just weren't in it. They had no gusto. They had no heart, and they didn't play defense. Yeah, it, That's coaching. It, it, it's it's. They look exactly like the football team does. I mean, it's fundamental stuff. They're not playing off the breaks. The opposing team is taking a shot. Nobody's fighting for the rebounds. Arizona's taking a shot. Everybody's watching this guy take a shot. Nobody's fighting for the rebounds. Slow off the breaks. It's just bad basketball, bad fundamentals. It's everything. All eyes are going to be on tomorrow night's game against Long Beach State. They're going to be playing at McHale Center. Luckily, the Cats are going to be home three and four against uh, Long Beach State. But if November was a month to for, uh, remember, oh man, or not to remember, take a look at the Cats schedule in December. Number nine ranked Texas A&M on December 5th, playing up in Phoenix on a neutral court. Then they play Alabama, 24th ranked on December 9th. Luckily that's here in Tucson. And then they play ASU on December 30th. It's possible the Cats could have five losses when they meet up with ASU. And ASU is looking good. 
It's the, and that's the thing about basketball is once you get so far behind really early, it's the, by the time March comes, it's tough to catch way back up for those guys. And Alabama has an incredible guard. It's, it's going to be a great game. They're so ranked 24th, we're, but I, I guarantee you it's going to be <laughs> probably the toughest game. Right, for we're about Arizona to see how the whole season is going to go, too. Well, <laughs> another shoe drops in the FBI investigation. Adidas is now turning on Rick Pitino and says there is evidence the fired Hall of Fame coach supported the scheme to pay players. In a motion to dismiss a lawsuit fi filed by Pitino, the shoe apparel company alleges Pitino called his top representative at the heart of the investigation three times before the recruit announced his commitment. Not good news for Patino. It's not good news for anybody at this point, considering how this is, been, this is the top of what's going on. I mean, there's still, uh, there's still a laundry list of people that are going down at the bottom. But he's the big fish that I think they wanted to go after first. <laughs> And I really think this has something to do with the psyche that's trickling down even to the University of Arizona. <laughs> They're the little fish, but they know the shark is swimming nearby. And that's the thing too, is that even if it was just Book Richardson, at the very least, the repercussions for the University of Arizona are gonna trickle down for the next two to three years. And by the way, the basketball team has already started with their losses. They might just have to, I would say, just fire everybody, start shop up back again at ground zero, start from the bottom. Well, I think uh, there will be more calls or some calls for firing uh, if the Wildcats continue to lose and, and don't make the tournament or something disastrous happens this, this year. Speaking of the Wildcats and the FBI investigation, Book Richardson, at the heart of the investigation involving Arizona, he pleaded not guilty last week. He's still suspended, hasn't been officially fired, but again... It's, it's still going to be downright impossible for him to find a job at any other program in the country. These are heavy allegations that are going on with this guy. You, you, got, you got to wonder where his head was at to begin with. And what's interesting with this FBI and the evolution of, of, of how it's all coming to play, two of the three players who, or I should say, two of three really big fish that are involved in this, the Adidas representative and the agent, are working with the prosecutors on a plea deal. And I really think that has some people singing. That's why you're starting to see the trickle down effect. Definitely, and at the very least, even if Book Richardson just calls it a day, takes off or let, lets bygones be bygones, if Sean Miller gets hooked into this somehow, some way, this is the end of it for him, no matter what. All right, from basketball to football, go figure. Two coaches, Arizona's Rich Rod and ASU's Todd Graham, were on the hot seat at the start of the football season. ASU beats Arizona 42-30. Both teams finish at 7-5. Rich Rod keeps his job. ASU's Todd Graham fired. Arizona had a strong first half. Running back J.J. Taylor carried the ball 12 times for a team-high 74 yards and one touchdown. Khalil Tate completed 10 of 11 passes, including that touchdown pass. But the Wills fell off with about one minute left in the first half. Rich Rod chose to run the ball three times, let the clock wind down, and throw a Hail Mary to the corner of the end zone. You're not going to see that there, but guess what happened? Khalil Tate got hurt. Game over. The Sun Devils outscored the Cats 28-6 to in the second half to win 42-30. to Not good play calling by Rich Rod. It's not good play calling by anybody. Just how we talked about it before, it's a reflection of the entire staff. It's... There's got to be position coaches wheeling them in, letting them know, saying, hey, we're, we, we need a little bit more leverage here in this department. Hey, this guy's not doing so good. And it looks like Rich Rod was kind of just trying to cover his behind with the entire situation that was going on. The zone was bad on defense, on offense. There wasn't a pass, there wasn't a, a pass game present. So it's, it's just an entire, uh, entire reflection of how the wheels came off for the entire staff. I mean, Arizona outgained uh, ASU in total yardage. They had more first downs. They averaged uh, 6.1 yards per game uh, per play compared to 5.9, and they possessed the ball 32 to 27. Mm -hmm. How do you lose that game? It's, and, and, and that's all it is: is missed opportunities. They're not taking advantage of negative yardage plays on offense. They're not having. They're not. They're not having good in first and second downs, which means third and long. They're having to play catch up. It's just. It's bad fundamentals, just like the basketball team. It's just like everything at this point. It's bad fundamentals. And 
the, Who do you the, blame though, Rich Rod or his coaches? I blame assistant. Rich Rod because those guys are getting paid X amount of dollars. We know it's large, X amount of dollars to pick up these, pick up the slack for Rich Rod. So you got to know that's going on. And by the way, by the way he handled the post game, it looks like he's just kind of, he, he's just kind of, kind of, uh, he, he's having a power craze. That's what it looks like. All right. Well, I like Rich Rod. I wish I could defend him, but I can't. When he throws a childish tantrum like a first grader during his post-game press conference. Take a look for yourself. What happened to Khalil? He got hurt. So he, obviously he was out at the beginning of the second half and then came back in. Was it sort of a questionable thing whether he could play or not? Let's see, he got hurt, got banged up. Then he tried to go, couldn't go, so the other guy went. Obviously, things changed in the third quarter. Do you, how, did, how were you trying to keep, sort of keep things together on the sideline? You know, well, you know, I'm trying to keep, just play. Situation? Just play. I mean, holy cow, Division One team, we can't punt. We can't cut you a snap and punt the ball. I mean, it's just unfathomable. I mean, it just kids are trying. I mean, it's just kind of remarkable. Yeah. Rich, what were you trying to do at the end of the first half with play calling in that situation and the clock management at the end of the first half? What was I trying to do? Yeah. Well, what you're trying to score. What? What's the question? I mean, what was the, I mean, with the clock well, managed? Yeah, we took a timeout so we could have a couple minutes to go, and then we, we tried to score, and then we didn't move the ball, and then they took timeouts like they should. Have. So. Did you think that the, that the on the punt return? Did you think it was a block in the back? No, I didn't. Man, that just says it all. <laughs> the body language, the, the verbal language, the everything. It's, it's, it's immature, it's childish, yeah. but I understand there's a lot of negative emotion following a loss, especially against ASU. Correct. But if you're the head coach of the program, that does not give you a hall pass to act like a first grader. It absolutely does not. If anything, you're held to a higher standard than everybody else. We hired you to be composed in these situations. Bad job. But we've criticized the coach for his sideline antics before. And I don't think this is the, this is not the first time we've seen this, this type of behavior. It's not the last time, but this, someone needs to talk to him. Yeah, it, it, it looks like it's just a sign of everything caving in all at once and he's finally starting to feel a little claustrophobic by it all. Well, we saw this against Oregon. He had that sideline tantrum. The team <laughs> just went downhill from there and they didn't respond and they lost. And again, look at ASU. Here we go Not again. a good showing. <laughs> so let's hope Rich Rock can get it together. Arizona still has a chance to put a little icing on the cake to finish the season with eight wins. They were projected to finish last in the Pac-12 South with at least eight losses. Wildcats will find out where they'll be going bowling on Sunday. Overwhelmingly, gridiron gurus at ESPN, Sports Illustrated, SB Nation, and Athlon Sports have the Cats playing in the Las Vegas Bowl December 16th against Again, Boise State. What do you think about that matchup for Arizona? I don't like it. I don't like it. It's but not, I love Vegas. I was like, it's not entertaining <laughs> enough for me. I, they're really trying to sell it in the, in the city of Las Vegas. But for me, it's, it's definitely a game that the, the Cats can conquer as a whole. To me, Boise State, if you look at their conference play, if you look at their schedule as a whole, they're exactly where they need to be. They have some losses. They won against who they were supposed to win against. They lost against who they were supposed to win against. They haven't overcome anything. We haven't seen any national coverage from them. They're, I, look, I think the Cats can take over this game in the first quarter. Well, two other media outlets have the Wildcats playing up the road in the Cactus Bowl. Take a look at this matchup right here. Projections have Arizona playing Kansas State and Iowa State. Not a good matchup, <laughs> regardless of who Arizona plays, if they play in the Cactus Bowl. Definitely, and just like I, on, on the inverse of what I was saying about Boise State, Iowa State, Kansas State, those teams are four or five mistakes away from being a two-loss team. Big Poss 12 teams that yeah, can run and gun, Possibly too. ranked in the top 20 in the, in, in the land. So. Definitely, the, the, that's going to be an entertaining game for the Cats. They definitely have an opportunity to learn something about the team as a whole and possibly against the game, a game against Iowa State, they could probably get some national coverage, probably start some hype up for Khalil Tate's Heisman run next year. But you don't like, you don't like the Iowa State game, though. Definitely. I, Iowa State, they've taken down some top-ranked teams. 
they've conquered everything that they needed to conquer. Like I said before, they're just four or five mistakes away from being a 2-1 loss team. All right, and finally, NBC Sports has the Cats playing in the Sun Bowl up in El Paso against Louisville and Heisman Trophy winner Lamar Jackson. Great matchup, mm -hmm. at least, for Khalil Tate to <laughs> measure just how good he can yeah, be for exactly. next year. Exactly, and us bringing up Lamar Jackson tells you exactly how ESPN, all of those guys are going to handle that coverage. So, like I said, when he starts his Heisman campaign up next year, if he puts together a 200, 100-yard game at the least, I'd say he might be a front-runner starting next year as a junior. All right, let's jump right into Do We Care? After all, we're not just a sports show. We break down community issues, big and small, and this is a big one. The Washington Times just came out with a short but scathing report surrounding Southern Arizona Congressman Raul Grijalva and his apparent, quote, drunken shenanigans. According to the paper, he reportedly paid almost $50,000 to a staff member in the form of a severance package after she complained of a hostile work environment and the congressman's frequent drunkenness. The staff member worked for the congressman for less than three months. Do we care? Of of course we do because we are those people that he took the money from and here I go I'm a broken record today it's a direct reflection of the, the, the state the state representatives the senators the everything as a whole it's just a giant tornado of a mess how can it get any worse for the state and right now he's being vilified on Facebook a couple of uh, people are saying chiming in right now talking about him Laura Collin he says I'd like him to specifically respond to why the taxpayer should pay any restitution for a hostile working environment he created. I agree with that. I think any money that was paid to this person should be paid by him. Mm -hmm. And since it came out of the taxpayer's dollars, he should repay that hush fund, period. Another viewer says, you owe the taxpayers and constituents an apology for your deplorable behavior, Congressman Grijalva. <sighs> yes, he does. Of course he does. Of course uh, he does. Yeah. Definitely, and, and that's the thing about it is, it's just, it's, uh, with everything that's been going on, the state is obviously thirsty for money with the, the police department, with the speeding tickets, and the, the way the ballot looked, and he takes it directly from the taxpayers. It's just a giant problem. It's a tornado of a problem, like I said. All right, you're up, batter up. All right, a hunting rights organization called the Safari Club International, which is based here in Tucson, is calling on the feds to lift import laws to allow elephant trophies, including heads and tusks, to be brought into the U.S. Do we care? Yes, this just tugs at everyone's heart, I think. Yes, we care. Why? Because hunting for uh, uh, elephants as a sport, that's not a fair game, first of all. <laughs> Two, it's flat out assassination. Long They're hunting for a trophy. They're not hunting out of necessity to eat the meat after they kill the elephant, <laughs> obviously. And it's one of those things where it's like, you know what, I don't agree with the conservationists who say, hey, it's to control the population, which will help uh, also help raise money that could be put back into uh, more programs to help with conservation efforts for the elephants who are a threatened species. Mm -hmm. I say BS, BS. And I, you cannot sit here and tell me that the reason that you want these laws to be lifted is through conservation. There's no the reason that the deer and elk population, the reason that that's not so unethical is because they limit vegetation. They do this and they do that. There's no such thing that's going on with elephants for that. All right, home run on that one. TUSD secretly allowed a controversial economics class to be taught at four predominantly Hispanic schools. Now, critics say the course textbook has biased teachings with ties to the Koch brothers who spent fortunes on pushing free market policies that fit their conservative views. Do we care? Definitely it does. I mean, if I were to call that anything, I would honestly call that white privilege. If, if we're gonna call it anything, primarily because uh, these underprivileged uh, ethnic, uh, ethnic students have to go elsewhere to search for all, for, for all of these things because everybody on the top of, uh, top of the ladder is force feeding it into everybody. A lot of these kids won't understand that if it's not going on at home. Well, I call them hypocrites. The Michael Hicks, board pre president, and Dr. Mark Stegeman, a couple of years ago, led the charge to ban ethnic studies based on the fact that they said it built racial division and that it taught Latinos to overthrow the government. 
And then they allow this secret, unaccredited economics class that is politically driven to basically sneak right into the classroom knowing that it's being funded in part through the University of Arizona and the Koch brothers and state lawmakers who are in turn cutting funding across the board with everything that they can that stands for public education. No big deal, Ridiculous. right? No big deal. And uh, Marana police fired one officer and three other officers resigned after details of an internal investigation into improper use of a computer database led to a second investigation that revealed all four were involved in a love triangle and allegedly having sex while on duty. So do we care? <laughs> I'll make this short and sweet. Police are there to serve the public, mm -hmm. not to be servicing each other sexually <laughs> while on duty yeah. and getting paid for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really creates a, a real problem, not only within Miranda, but we're looking at Tucson when Tucson police had that big sex scandal with the massage parlors. Now we have Miranda. What kind of policing is really going on behind the scenes? We really need to crack down on this and regain community trust. That's the key. That's exactly it, because if we're talking about behind the scenes, this is such a large thing. These guys are literally on the job, not making calls, not doing not doing anything of the sort. So what other corners are they well, cutting? Well, that speaks to accountability. Exactly. Why didn't anyone know where they were for three hours? Exactly. What other corners are they cutting? If that's such a large problem, what are the small things that are going to trickle down into the community? Bad, bad everything for the, for the police All right, department. The arrest of six Middle Eastern men caught entering the United States illegally from Mexico two years ago set off alarms among right-wing blogs who then used the report to fuel fears that we were under attack by ISIS. Associated Press, though, has now uncovered the men were fleeing violence and persecution and were not really terrorists. Do we care? Of course we care, primarily because these, these Middle Easterners had nothing to do with ISIS and a lot of people immediately anchored them and stapled them to it. So of course, it just looks like these guys are just fishing for a story. If these guys are so scared of ISIS, they'll do anything they can to make sure that it seems like we, we need to be fearful of it. Well, my concern and my anger is towards the federal government and really USBP. They knew immediately that these group of men cooperated with authorities mm -hmm. and they knew right away that they were not terrorists but they allowed it to pass because they wanted to promote their own agenda stir fear during an election year and allow it to just go as is mm -hmm. and that's what I'm I, that that really just bothers me because the powerful mm -hmm. were not being held accountable and they should have been all right we <laughs> We really took that segment to all and that's what it's for. Well, you've heard the phrase, oh, no, you didn't. Well, here at the 520, we're not afraid to tell it like it is with, oh, yes, we did. And I'll get started. Back to Sean Miller and the basketball team. It's the talk of the town and the talk of the state, the state of Arizona basketball in shambles. No one wants to whisper it out loud, but a lot of fans, while they back the team, which we all should, feel as though the FBI investigation is weighing heavily on Sean Miller. Do we know this for a fact? No. But here's what we do know. He's not coaching with a purpose. He's not making adjustments. He's not motivating his players. And the most telling sign, players are not responding to his leadership with the same determination. That is why I'm going to go there and I'm going to say, you know what? Someone needs to sit him down, sit him on the bench, and let Romar and his assistants take over for a couple of days while Sean Miller maybe drives up to Mount Lemon and <laughs> just clears his mind because there's a huge cloud over uh, McHale Center and I think that this FBI investigation is having an impact on him. Definitely, definitely. I, I, like, we, like I said before, hey, I mean, at week four with the Arizona football program, hey, we were doing the same thing, no problem. And uh, yesterday at the White House, they hosted an event that catered to honor the Navajo Code Talkers who we all know aided in the victory in World War II. And here we go again, President Donald Trump making headlines with yet another ridiculous comment and no repercussions. Speaking so inconsiderate in front of Native American veterans saying, quote, we have a representative in Congress who they say was here a long time ago. They call her Pocahontas. Well, how inconsiderate. Navajo uh, tribal members in Flagstaff came out today and 
basically said the president should apologize because that is a racial slur and they felt like he took away from the honor of the code talkers as opposed to you know making it about another senator whom he has um, a vendetta against so uh, ridiculous as, and that's the thing is how many of these is he gonna get he's in the headlines yet again saying a ridiculous comment when are we finally gonna bottom line if we're gonna thing. be fair if we're gonna be fair if Representative Raul Grijalva is being called mm -hmm. to apologize. The president, who is should be held to a higher standard, should be apologizing as well. Then when are we? When is everybody going to ask him to do that? Because it hasn't happened yet. Drop the politics, man. Mm -hmm. Let's do what's right, not what's wrong. Because exactly, two wrongs don't exactly. make a right. Well, that does it for this <laughs> week's 520. As you know, our goal is to tell it like it is because it's all about giving voice to opinions, even if you don't agree. I'm Steve Nunez. And I'm Marty Mata. Join us next week on the 520.